Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Northeast Scene Podcast. This is Keith. And Tommy. How's everybody doing? Labor Day has just ended. Tommy and I are here, and uh, the weekend is winding down, and we have no guest. Our guest had to cancel, uh, but we're going to get them back, and I'm looking forward to that guest. But you know what? The show must go on. And Tommy, I was thinking about this. You know, this podcast, it averages usually around two hours, right? Yeah. So that's like, that's quality entertainment. Think about it. Like The Sopranos was one hour a week. Yeah. Uh, The Wire, one hour a week. Recent HBO classic show, The Outsider, one hour a week. We are giving the people two hours a week. Those are shows written by geniuses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is... and, and like this show too, when we get together every weekend and write the script for the next week's <laughs> podcast. <laughs> it's so funny. It's like, remember, uh, like people used to always get uh, real mad at Stern for like not doing a ton of show prep and like people would yell at it and like, they're like, dude, you don't even sound like you're prepared today. I'm like, Okay, I'm sorry for Mike from Red Hill. Like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> yeah, and that when people say that they have, he has an entire staff, like an entire staff. They they do tons of prep. It's like he always says, the fact that it sounds like there is no prep, that's the idea. Yeah, it's like when the stand up comedians are on stage. It sounds like they're making things up as they go along, or they just have like this observation. You're like, wow, that's really fucking like. That seems organic and natural. And then you realize like they've said that joke a thousand times and they fucking hate it. (laughs) Or like when you, when you hear Dave Chappelle, he's so relaxed. Oh yeah. He's like, it's almost like he's just coming up with it on the spot and it's, that's, that's it. And we're, we're on the same level. (laughs) We're so, we're so, (laughs) we're so relaxed and we just do this so naturally that, uh, everyone is gravitating towards it. I was actually, I was thinking about this today because I had just watched, um, there was a clip of, have you seen, I, I, I mean, this is not like new, but like, have you seen what Artie Lang looks like recently? Yeah. All right. So he was on either Mark Marin or Joe Rogan. I forget which one it was, but I, I, I wasn't watching it, but I, I heard the, like, I listened to the clip while my phone was in my pocket and, uh, he tells a story about being friends with Greg Giraldo and when the, um, Comedy Central roast came out. It was like, you know, Greg Giraldo like kind of skyrocketed to fame and yes. him and Artie were on the same flight and he comes up to Artie like five minutes before the flight and he's like, I'm not getting on this plane and he's all like fucking messed out. He's he- all strung out. Yeah. And they went into the airport lounge. Yes. Yes. And then he, he gave him like some pills. Yeah, and Artie like- had Artie had like stashed Vicodin in his in his sock. So yeah. he was like, I gave him a couple of Vicodin. He drank a beer. He started to calm down and he's like. The, the whole next night, he was like, I'm Florence Nightingale. I'm fucking sitting next to this guy with fucking warm compresses and taking care of him. And he's like, and he said think- he was holding his hand and stuff. <laughs> yes, he goes, the first joke he goes when he gets on stage, Greg Geraldo goes, Artie Lang, you fat fucking drug addict. <laughs> like, <laughs> because it was that immediate look we just gave each other. He's like, I just fucking helped you. Like, I just fucking took care of you for so long. And you're just going to fucking slam me right away. But I've been in that situation Oh, I've yeah. been in that situation so many times. So if like a if a large angel with a smashed nose and a sock full of Vicodin came to me and you know was there to save me, it would it would be my dream come true. That's he he he's so and it's like it was good to see him like sober and like funny and like just you know how Artie tells a story and he just like has that cackle in between him telling a story. He, like, he can't even get the words out. He's laughing so hard. It is fucking. It was. I was laughing by myself in my like i was i had my phone in my pocket i was in my garage getting stuff ready to paint and i was like i was like laughing and there's a family walking by with like their dog and stuff and they probably were just like what is this idiot doing by himself in the garage (laughs) i'm just like laughing really hard by myself Artie's laugh is so infectious there there's times on the stern show where he would just start laughing at something and everyone else would start laughing just thinking about his laugh now i'm like almost laughing there's there's it's so good do you remember that he told that old story about how he got fired from Mad TV? Oh yeah, uh, with the the pig the pig costume, and he had to like drive out to the Pacific Coast Highway and buy coke and everything. Dude, that story he is. There's one part of the story where he's like, "There's a woman next to me <laughs> in like a Lamborghini," and his voice starts getting higher as he keeps telling the story. And he's like, yeah. "And she's looking at me, and I'm a pig, and I'm doing." Coke <laughs> 
I'm literally a pig. Like he's so his fucking voice. Him just retelling that story that's so sad and so tragic is so fucking funny. God, he is genius, that guy. He has to be the most famous drug addict. And I'm talking like active drug addict, right? And he's not anymore. I think he's got over a year sober now, but yeah. he has to be the most famous like active drug addict, right? Yeah, he was, dude, keep in mind, like, think about it like this. Uh, it was him and Greg Giraldo and Mitch Hedberg were all kind of fighting that same battle. And, yeah. you know, Artie somehow, by the grace of God, walked out on the other end. Like, and Yeah, and I used to follow i used to follow artie so much meaning like his saga on the stern show and reading his books and because before when i was in that state like i would read books about the similar like similar situations and you'd be like oh my god like you can because you can empathize with it you're like i've been there i've been in that situation i've been in you know had cold sweats and you know yeah yeah like i would read about famous drug addicts and i think i was looking for some kind of answer and Usually I didn't find one, but uh, actually I never I found one because they were usually dead. Like I read about John <laughs> Belushi and Chris Farley, and I'm like, you know, that's not going to really help. That's a, it's it's such a like it's one of those things that like it's it's sad because uh, you just you're watching somebody fall apart, and it's like you can't do anything until that person wants to get better. Yeah, and when Artie was talking about it, that was actually one of the things he was talking about. And he kept saying like. Yo, Mitch Hedberg would say consistently, don't, don't you dare do a fucking intervention because I'm never quitting. Like, this is how I'm living my life. Like, this is what I'm doing. Don't, don't ever try to stop me because I don't want to ever stop. Yeah. Yeah. I remember being places like high and saying like, no, I'm fine. No, like you're, you're, you got to sort out your business, but I'm fine. I, you know, I have a job. I have somewhere to live. It's all good. That's, I, I always thought like that was one of the things with you is like, I remember a couple of times going out um, to the pub and the next day I'd have to call off of work. Cause I was so hung over. Like I was so sick, like throwing up kind of sick and yeah. I would shoot you a text and you'd be like, no, I'm at work. I'm like, how, yeah. the, how? <laughs> like, like you were worse than me. Like, how did you not, how did you get up and go to work? But you, you always, dude, you're fucking, uh, an exercise in perseverance, dude. You always went to work and always fucking maintained. I don't know how you did it. Because like, the only way to keep the party going was sh- to get paid. That's true. Without That's the, without the gig, the the party stops. Yes, without the gig, there's nowhere to live. There's you know, bills aren't paid. If I'm working, if I'm at work, I'm collecting a paycheck and I can keep the machine moving. And you can do like, I, I remember seeing something about um, like people talking about uh, like their, how much their habit costs per day. And like, um, I forget who it was. It was a famous celebrity though, but they were talking about how they would go through um, a gram of Coke in like the course of like, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. And I'm like, how? <laughs> like, like I, I, I've literally been around people and watch them do drugs and go, okay, I can see that. But like, they space it out. Like, okay. Like, cause it's always like, you know, like the old Dennis Leary thing, like, you know, this will last us the whole weekend. Like, yeah, it's, well, it depends on how much money you make and how much you're doing. If you, if you have tons of money and you've been doing it for years, you're going to, you're going to be able to do a lot more, you know? It just, that just depends on that. And man, before I moved to New York city, I would routinely wake up Friday morning and I'd be up all weekend and I wouldn't, I'd walk into work Monday morning. After having not slept for. Yeah. (laughs) Like that was a regular thing. And I was like, man, I, I got a real problem on my hands. Yeah. That is, you know what though, with that kind of like that ability to be able to like, just keep it moving is there's not many people that can keep that because it's a balance. Like you were able to balance two things at the same time that were both heavily investments of time and money. Like you're, 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 
you're working a job where, you know, you have deadlines, you have, you have to do this work, like things need to be turned in and you have to be on a plane or like you have to be making a flight. And I'm like, how the fuck does this kid do this? Like, I don't, I would be hung over times and be like, I can't get out of bed. I'm going to sit in bed with a warm or with a cold washcloth on my head and, and moan for six hours Ugh, with the worst headache in the world. I don't know. I was having this conversation recently with a friend and I said, I don't know how I did it. And he said, you know, some of the stuff you're doing, they give to people right before they die. <laughs> so, so he's like, think about it. Like they're about to die and they give them these things. So think about what you can accomplish in that state all the time. Yeah. You've essentially, you were handicapping yourself for the better part of, you know, a decade and a half. Yeah. And this ties in, this ties in good to what I want to talk about. Let's talk about what we did this past weekend. Now it's Labor Day weekend. Yeah. It's the evening of Labor Day right now. It's winding down. Uh, I was at Romy's house all weekend, as I always am. And, you know, it was it was fun. But yet yesterday, Sunday, I got a huge anxiety attack. I didn't have to go to work the next day. We didn't have to do anything. We didn't have to be anywhere. But I was super, super, super edgy. I was, I felt like it could be a problem where I might like, you know, get mad or, or ever snap, something stupid. Like snap it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I, I held it together. I was like, all right, we have this thing at six o'clock. I always feel better after that. Just hang in there. Yeah. And I did. And I did. And then we made dinner and we ate and I felt better. I was still edgy, but man, I don't, do you get edgy when you have to like leave the house or go places or vacations or, I mean, how do you feel about that stuff? Okay. So you kind of hit the the nail on the head with this one. I don't get nervous about work, about leaving, about things like that. But vacation for me is a nightmare. Like, okay. I, I hate leaving my house knowing that I'm not going to be back for whatever specific amount of time, four days, seven days, 10 days, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, the worst time I've had this ever happen was two summers ago. Well, no, last summer we had right in a row. We went to Disney world. Um, we left on a Friday morning at like 6am, mm -hmm. went to Disney for seven days and we came home unpacked our stuff, washed our clothes, packed them right back up and went down the shore for another week with my family. Oh. I, I'm telling you right now, Keith, I was a, I was hard to deal with to the point where like, it wasn't fun. Like, mm -hmm. and I, I knew I was ruining, like, especially like Kelly, like was like, Kelly was pregnant and she was just like, you know, at, at that point she was like five and a half months pregnant, almost six months. And, you know, I could see her like glance at me sometimes like, dude, what the fuck? Like, can you just take it down a notch? And I, I, I don't know what it is. I think there's a part of it, like, especially like if I'm down the shore, um, like I, I don't like, I, I, how do I put this? Like, so like a lot of people in my, like when I'm down the shore with my family, it, it's like a big party for them. Like yes. from morning till night. So like they're making eggs and opening a beer. <laughs> so like, uh, that's a very common thing for them. And for me, like, um, this was at a point where I was like, I really need to, um, keep them. Like I have a baby coming. I have two girls. Like I, I need to like keep my drinking in, in check. And I was like, look, uh, like, without drinking down there, that was my ultimate release of like, all right, I'm going to have a couple beers when we get home from the beach or I'm going to make a drink and I'm going to do this. And it's like, now that I didn't have that or I, I was, everything bothered me to the point where like, you know, when you get sand on you and it's like annoying cause it's like rubbing and it's like, it, it got to the point where like, I think I was like almost neurotic about it. Like I was consistently just trying to keep the sand off of me off of the girls like it was just it was like an obsession and i don't know where it came from other than the fact that like i'm so used to my coping mechanism down there to be like all right i'm anxious i don't like this feeling drink and i think that's it because 
I was talking about this with Romy recently. You, you, I used to walk into any situation and I could just have, have a drink and I'd be plugged right in. Yeah. It didn't matter what it was. And you, you're just in it and you're comfortable. You're like, I got more drinks coming. I can get more, you know, when, when that still worked. And that's it. And that's all off the table now. I can't drink. I can't do anything. I can't even smoke a cigarette. I, I went up to see my family in upstate New York and everyone got plastered. They were yelling at each other. Like oh, yeah. they're just talking and they're yelling and they're, they're not like yelling at each other, like angry, but everyone's talking and they're all yelling. They're and, super, and yeah, super, it's like it's that super exaggerated, like I'm having a great time and we're all just retelling, yeah, old, yeah telling and I'm like, stories and shit. And you're like, oh my God, please. <laughs> like, yeah. And I'm like, let me duck outside and try to smoke a cigarette. My sister had camel blues. I like those. Yeah, I like those too. And I had two drags and I'm like, I hate this. Like I hate this, and there, there's there's no there's no escape. So I just like to be home. I've got this big desk. I've got t- my two computers set up. I've got the PlayStation right next to me. I watch YouTube videos. I listen to podcasts and radio. I play video games. It's like my my sanctuary. So I'm when I'm at my girlfriend's house or when I'm away, it's I get super edgy. I don't have my setup, you know, and I I'm. I have to talk to people, we're having meals, we're doing stuff, so I can't just sit there and listen to like Howard Stern, you know what I mean? And no, no, yeah, kind of like tune out, you have these social yeah, obligations. I, like, I got to be on, so being on makes me super edgy, and I, I, get, I get edgy and anxious about everything, and Sunday it was, it was bad, but I persevered, and today we went and had a picnic in uh, East River Park. That was super nice, and I'm glad we got out and did something because I can be kind of a schlub, and I don't like to go do stuff half out of laziness and half out of being anxious. Yeah. Um, but we went out, and I'm really happy about that. And uh, yeah, I don't know, man. So it's just it's just hard. I think my anxiety, especially when I'm on vacation, comes from I have a very sp- very specific sleep routine like that I do before I go to bed. Like I like my pillows a certain way. I like to have the temperature a certain way. Yes. I, and I, when I'm not there and am not in my bed and sleeping comfortably, I get anxious about that because in my head I'm going, all right, I'm not sleeping well tonight, which means I'm going to be shitty tomorrow. And this is not going to end for the next 13 days. Um, yeah. Do you, do you like panic? I panic and I'm like, I'm not going to be able to fall asleep. I'm not going to be able to fall asleep and I'm going to get mad. Like, um, I don't anymore with that. I don't really panic like about that kind of stuff. Um, specifically because I think one of the biggest things is I've learned to kind of like recognize when I'm getting to that place and kind of like go, okay, I'm, I'm feeling this way. What are things that make me not feel like this. And it usually means like putting myself in a situation where I'm in total control of something. So like, um, or something that takes my mind off it. So now like when we go down the shore, um, I bring, we have the, um, I talked about this with, I think, um, when Vadim was on the, that raspberry pie. So we, we, we have the, the four hookup thing and we all can play like old video games. So we were playing like, you know, uh, excite bike and all that stuff that gets me in a place where I'm like, I have complete control of the situation. I can show the kids something fun. Everybody's enjoying themselves. Um, but yet I, I shy away from, especially like the adult stuff that they're doing at night. Cause like it really, ro- it just involves around, it, it revolves around them drinking. And I'm like, okay, I've, I've had drinks in the past like few years where I'm like, okay, I can have a drink, but I have not like, drank like i used to in a very long time and that makes me really nervous because if i'm in that situation and i'm around especially like my sisters where they're like no have a drink have another one just have one more i'll make i'll make i'll make this i'll make that and it's like i don't i don't want that because then i'm gonna feel like shit like the next day and then i'm not gonna sleep right it's just like it it's that it snowballs in my head and then i can't it's almost like um you know, the best way I can explain it to like kind of like an analogy is like, you know, when you get a song stuck in your head, yeah, it's that it's this thought that consistently just happens over and over again. And I think the, I always go back to this, but like meditation has done one of those things where it's kind of gotten me to the point where I'm like, Oh, I, I can recognize that this emotion is kind of starting to swell up. I can like acknowledge that it's there and then try to move past it. 
like weather. yeah i can do that now too not all the time but sometimes like instead of starting a stupid fight or being uh irritable like in my relationship i'll be like hey this is going on and i feel weird so i'm gonna do this and then she's like oh okay like when yeah. you can actually have those conversations it's awesome yeah no i i've i've done that before where um like especially like down the shore is actually really nice because there's a lot of people that do it but like um I, I'll go for runs at night. So like when the, after the kids go to bed, so like eight 30 or nine o'clock, maybe like nine 30, um, the boardwalk is completely lit up and there's, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, I would walk along there. Yeah. Yeah. So I just either go, go out and do like a, like a jog where I put my headphones on and just kind of zone out. Um, yeah. and that, you know what I do? I always have a, I always book a hotel. I have to have an escape hatch. And, you know, people always want you to stay with them and stuff, but I, I just don't do it. Because when I'm done, I'm done. That's it. I always think of, uh, you know, like when you, well, this is like going back years and years, but like Mary used to get like wasted, right? Yeah. There's that moment where I don't care what else is happening. I've made the decision that I need to go to bed. Like I'm that kind of fucked up where I'm like, I need to be in a bed. Like I need to be asleep now. Yes. And I, I've done it before where I, I've actually, I did it at your house. <laughs> where I was like, Keith, I need to go to bed and I need to be like in a bed. You're like, I'm not sleeping. Go ahead. You can get my bed. <laughs> and I was like, really? And you're like, yeah, I'm not going to bed. What are you fucking crazy? It's fucking two o'clock in the morning. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm so drunk. I gotta go. Like I got have to go lay down. Um, but I think that's a big thing for me is like, I, I have learned that like when those, when those times come up, because I've heard people say that all the time, whether they say like, you know, I have anxiety and I'm like, okay, well I have, or I have, I, I'm panicking. I'm like, okay, well, true panic is like, uh, the, the, that comedian, uh, Jay Moore, he used to tell it, like he said, you know, when he used to be on Saturday Night Live he would tell this story about how he would have these major panic attacks when he was trying to write skits. And he goes, major panic attacks aren't like when I'm like, Oh, I'm over anxious and I can't sit still. He's like, I literally, my body was telling me to run at a full sprint. He's like, because your adrenaline is so high and you can't do anything to kind of like, you know, disperse that energy. He's like, you, he goes, I would find myself, in my apartment building, he goes, literally, I would go to the back stairwell and run up and down the steps <laughs> until it went away. Well, you want to read some reviews for the show? Yes. We got a couple of new ones uh, from L LSZ909. On point and off topic delight. Hearing the soothing and well-spoken voices of the hosts reflecting on a time now past and often forgotten from my youth is a trip. Emotional, passionate, genuine, insightful. Listen with a pencil and paper nearby because there are so many musical references. From new music suggestions that I wish I was aware of sooner to acts and bands that I heard about way back when and never got to, or were on mix CDs that was crushed in the back of a Civic, <laughs> <laughs> lost and never replaced. Sprinkle in behind the scenes stories with solid content makes it a must subscribe. Thanks for the laughs and good times. Oh, that's like nice. That. That's really nice because that's that's what we want to do. Like that's what we want to do is make sure that people understand. Like we, it's this is when I was I was actually texting. Um, well, I don't want to say his name, but one of the guests that uh, I'm prepping for, and I was like, "Hey, man, like it's not an interview." And he's like, "Okay, so do you want to send me like questions that you're going to ask?" I'm like, "No, like it's it's literally just a hang. Like we just come in and." He's like, oh, okay. And I'm like, it, we have gone off on topics like religion, um, sobriety, uh, <laughs> guitar yeah. tunings, like you, you name it. Like it's just wherever the conversation goes, we don't have like a real yeah. uh, specific thing. But the thing is, is that we always talk about stuff. You can always tell like if we're into it, like we're like, yeah, well, let's go further with this. And if it's something that we're like, eh, I don't really have much can I just jerk it back into another direction? Good, because that, yeah, unlike me, because I, I, I'm like a ship without a rudder, dude. I'll fucking, <laughs> I'll go off. Like, you get me talking about, like, that is the thing the other day. It was funny. Uh, Kelly was like, what the hell are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm writing out math for Keith. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like why i was like it's a long story but i was like he needs help with this problem and was, she's like do you really like it that much and i was like yeah you know i that's why i i didn't mind asking you i'm like oh man it's labor day weekend but i'm like tommy loves this shit 
He loves this shit. So my my girlfriend's daughter, uh, she she's like, can you help me with this? I took one look at it. I was like, no. And I'm like, hold on. I know who to ask. And I just imagined you like, <laughs> like I, was, I, was I so got this. like cracking your knuckles. Like, I got this. Yes. I was so excited when I saw. Well, I got really excited when I saw that there was only one variable. I was like, OK, I don't yeah. remember the system stuff all the time. Like, I'm not the great. only thing I remembered was like the shit in parentheses. You have to do that first, I think. Oh, the distribution stuff. Yeah. Like that's yeah. but it's really it, it's uh, especially with like uh anybody that like knows math it was really just like a it was an inequality but it was like there was the same variable throughout the entire problem so basically it was just combining like terms but it's one of those things that if you're not if you haven't done math like that in a long time like you said like you just look at it and go no like it's just because it's this, it's a, it's seemingly impossible because you there's so many rules there's things you have to know like and I actually had to look up one thing because I was like in my head I'm going like all right with inequalities if you divide by a negative number you have to switch the inequality but when I you, totally zoned out when you said all that I, I like all I heard was inequalities and like <laughs> I started thinking about like I don't know what well, else I. I well, I I said to you like you know if if there's anything past algebra two like you're gonna have to call Vadim because yeah. Vadim is really like, anything that's like the calcu like anything calculus or it like I'm good up to trigonometry and algebra two like the calc stuff um, differential equations partial diff eq like that stuff I I don't even know where to start. Like, I, I don't even know how I, when I look at those problems, I, it's like the same way you looked at it. Like, I'm just like, I don't, I don't know what the rules are and I don't even know how to start solving the problem. Um, I think that's, it's a problem though. Cause like we just look at stuff like that all the time and it's, you know, we should be able to do it, but the way it's taught, why should we be able to do it? Because the, it, it, it doesn't I, mean anything. It doesn't, but it does in terms of like, it, it's a, it's a, it's a skill that I, it, it applies to so many different like things in terms of like understanding more complicated things. It's a really great way to like, it, it tests no. those skills of like, okay, what are the processes I use to solve and what are the, what order do they need to be in? I think that's the biggest thing it teaches us. I think what my problem is, and this is what I try to do with my math class is like, have the kids understand the why, like the, pra- what's the practical application of this? Because it's the vast majority of like people, like what you're saying is like, why? Like, what the fuck, what's the difference? Like, if I can't solve for X here, it doesn't change. Like, you know, I'm never going to need this when I go to pay my taxes or if I have to, you know, like it, the, the math most people need on a daily basis, you learn in fifth grade. Like you, you don't need to go past that. And the problem is, is that we forget the rules because that's the way it's taught to us. We don't inherently understand why we're doing certain things. So we learn it for the test and then we fucking forget it. Like it's, it's hard. Yeah. Cause it doesn't mean anything. We no. don't need it. Or, Did you hear this girl on, on uh, here, this is math. Ready? I'm going to play something for yeah. you. This girl on TikTok summed it up pretty well. I was just doing my makeup for work and I just wanted to tell you guys about how I don't think math is real. And I know that, like, it's real because we all, like, learn it in school or whatever. But who came up with this concept? And you're like, Pythagoras. But (laughs) how? How did he come up with this? He was living in, like, the, I don't know, whenever he was living. But it was not now where you can, like, have technology and stuff, you know? Like, he didn't even have plumbing. And he was like, let me worry about Y equals MX plus B. Which, first of all, how would you even figure that out? How would you like start on the concept of algebra like what did you need it for you know because like i get like addition like hey if i take two apples and then add three it's five you know but how would you come up with the concept of like algebra because what would you need it for you know what i mean like what would you need it for back then you didn't need it so why would you come up with it (laughs) she has a very valid point i i I guess I I just think like um I don't know. There's a lot of like when you start to see like how Wait, you Wait, I don't no, I don't want to actually talk about it. But uh, just the only thing is is like when you, when you see like how you can solve really difficult problems using uh equations, it's it's a, it makes a lot more sense. You go, "Oh, okay, so that's the act." Like, In the context of math though. Yeah, but I mean the, like the Like I'm not like, going to learn I'm not going to learn how to do that equation and then like 
know how to build a fireplace. <laughs> no, but I mean, I I think it's more now of like when people start understanding like why mathematics is so important. I think they start to see like, oh, there's practical applications in terms of like things like I can solve for unknown values in things like okay. Um, like budgeting for money. Like, okay, so how much money do I need to save every month? Yeah, she to... said you have two apples and you add three, you have five. So if I have $300, I can't spend more than $300. I don't need X and Y in that. That's true. But uh, when it gets to more like complicated stuff, like... Uh, the like... only thing it's good for is like for these Wall Street bozos to learn derivatives <laughs> to like rip people off. <laughs> Legalized gambling. That is, it is one of those things I actually, uh, do you get, uh, well, you don't, I don't know if you do, but do you go on YouTube a lot and get, or on Instagram, you get a lot of ads for like, Hey, you learn how to sell stocks and how to short sells, you know, and trade. And it's like, I don't, why is this being marketed to me? Maybe because I look up math stuff. I think that's. Yes. Cause I get ads for guitar pedals and chicken sandwiches <laughs> and video game stuff. That's actually what I did with my Labor Day is we, we redid our front room. So we're getting new flooring put in. But before we did the flooring, we wanted to paint and like, you know, uh, get some, you know, we have those that baseboard heating, you know, like the big, mm -hmm. they, and they're all old and like, you know, they get dinged up from like the vacuum cleaner hits them and like, you know, they get wet sometimes and they're like rusty in spots. So we want to get new ones. And I was like, oh, I got to look up how you replace these. So I looked up a YouTube video and I don't think more than 10 minutes later, um, I had emails coming from both Lowe's and Home Depot that were like, hey, 15% off all of your Labor Day purchases. And <laughs> in the suggested purchases was fucking new covers for my baseboard heaters. I was like, are you going to replace those? Yeah. So we actually ordered this stuff. That's a crazy thing because everybody's home right now and doing home renovations. The shipping time is really long on them. Um how much is new flooring going to cost you? Uh, I forget the estimate like exactly, but I think it was just under 5,000. Oh my God. Do you have that in savings and you pay it off or do you like pay a Lowe's card? Oh no. I, yeah, we have savings like that. I have, I don't want to say the exact number, but I, let's just put it this way. Like if my wife and I both needed to go out and buy new cars tomorrow, we could. Really? Oh Yeah. Wow. Oh, easily. Yeah. Like, and that because I, I, I'm curious about this stuff because I live check to check. I'm still paying off debt from before I have a little bit of credit card debt left. Yeah. And I, I had to take out a loan to move. I moved like four times uh, over a span of a year because oh, I yeah. just kept getting crappy apartments. Oh, I remember that where the, you were suing that one guy for roaches and the fucking. Uh, yeah. Yeah, dude. I remember all that. Holy cow. I actually won. But I didn't fight to get the money back because, like, I, it, it had been years at that point. I, I just don't care anymore. We had uh, some really bad tree issues this year, and we had five large trees taking it down. So that was like forty seven hundred dollars. We're getting the new floor in, which is like just under five thousand, I think. I don't think I've ever had more than fifteen hundred dollars in my bank account. So. We actually have a bank account that is through our... Um, oh, wait, I take that back. I have a 401k. I forget that that counts. That counts. Yeah, that yeah. counts too in terms of like assets you have. Like that, That's money. Yeah. So you're telling me working two people, working regular jobs, you can have a house and savings and children and still be able to buy flooring and new cars if you wanted to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. We, that just but, seems impossible to me. Oh, I forget that I live in fucking New York City. Yeah, I was going to say, my house costs $300,000, and it's like, you know, it, it's it, it's where we're going to live forever. You want to hear another review? Yeah, what do you got? Mike Golan, <laughs> digging this podcast. He says, yo, great podcast, guys. Very proud of you. You two are very engaging and keep conversation going very naturally which makes it super easy to listen to. Cloud Kicker is awesome, Tommy. Happy to hear that mention. You yeah. guys have a subscriber here. I'll listen to everything you put out, even when there are no musical guests, like today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. What's up, yeah, Colin? Good. 
thanks for the podcast gents a plus so that's oh, two five star reviews and thanks folks for sending those keep sending those we need those we need lots of those yeah. uh five star ratings reviews that uh puts us in high standing with apple podcasts and subscribe to us too we need that you know how do you grow a podcast what 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 should we do I don't know. Should I, do I have to like keep adding people on Instagram again or something? I think that's one of those things. And then uh, this is what I've noticed is that people are very uh, strategic with the hashtags they use to reach, yeah. reach specific audiences. But I guess I'm one of those people that I don't, I don't have any hashtags that I follow. Actually, that's not true. I follow one. Um, I think it's called like nature is brutal or real nature or something like that. And yeah. it's, it's always like uh, crazy videos of like people out on safari or something like that, or some fucking like wild ass thing where like, you know, a hippo eats an antelope or something like that. It's I never click on hashtags or, and I don't follow any, I use them because it, it helps us, yeah. but you know, I just, but uh, I don't know, maybe, I don't know when this, when things open back up, maybe we can book a show and like have some bands play or, I don't know. We'll That'd think of something. Yeah, we got to do something. Oh, we got to do something with those that whole sticker pack, too. Oh, right. We mentioned that in another episode. I'm going to make a post this week. It's literally it's sitting like to like three feet to the right of me in in like a Ziploc storage bag. But there's everything from Audience of One, This Day Forward, Boz Henna, Saves the Day. Um, there's a ton of shit in there, dude. It's just it's uh, and it's all stuff Doug just dropped off at the house. So take some pictures of it. We're going to post those this week. Okay, cool. Yeah. Don't I actually, I think I have a big thing. There's a couple bands in there that I was like, he had tons of stickers for. And I was like, I've never heard of this band. One of them was a uh, life cycle. Never heard of them. Ne- yeah, me neither. But dude, they're really nice stickers. They're like glossy ones. And they're like fucking, they're good. Like they're nice. really so nice. Tommy's, Tommy's going to, or our account is going to post some pictures of that <laughs> stuff. And if you want it message, uh, our Instagram account and Tommy will mail it to you. Yeah, I'll just make yeah, just send me, just DM me your address and stuff, and I'll I'll just I'll mail them out because that's a, that's yeah. an easy one to you know get people to at least pay attention for a little bit. That's all we want is a little bit of your attention. <laughs> yeah, we get good engagement on the Instagram account. Maybe I need to try to follow some people, get some more new some new blood in. Oh, and uh, I like that. Yeah, there's that dude. Uh, he was the one that's. I, I think he sent us the video for uh, the uh, the last this day forward show, or maybe he sent us the life once lost ones. Uh, Ed, 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 yeah. yeah. So uh, I saw the other day he had a thing. Oh, I probably shouldn't have. My phone turned on. My bad. I was trying to find his Instagram name. He had a picture published in a, like a real magazine of him uh, like do, doing some tricks on a. He does. He rides BMX. Yeah, um, and he's fucking real good. And he's one of these guys, he goes out and finds fucking crazy spots um, that nobody else thinks to ride, and he fucking rides them. It's really, he's a super good dude, and he always contacts us and says cool shit. So um, shout out to that dude, because he's one of these people that, he also, I think he was the guy we ended up sending the heinous anus stuff to. Yeah, I like him. Yeah, yeah. He, he looks t- talented with the BMX stuff. Yeah, and he I love the fact that, uh, so I did this over the weekend, so... My oldest, not my oldest, sister, my old, one of my older sisters, uh, dropped her daughter off at my mom's house, which is only about 10 minutes from my house. And she's mm-hmm. getting very interested in skateboarding. So that's what we did Saturday morning. We got up really early and we went to the skate park and, uh, went and skateboarded for like three hours. And it was really fun. It was great exercise, got out. And, uh, when you get there really early in the morning and skateboarders are not notorious early risers. <laughs> so fucking we had the whole place to ourselves for like i mean we literally only left because it was like it's this when the sun really started to come out it was it was getting hot and i was like dude I, I can't be out here for much longer and i'm a dummy and didn't pack anything to eat i brought drinks for everybody i brought like bottles of water and like ice and stuff like that but you know nine o'clock came and they were like uh do we have any snacks i'm like no <laughs> Just, Dude, I don't. I'm I'm like an old person now. I don't go anywhere without a jacket and something to eat and something to drink. Really? Which is funny because I used to go days without eating and like not even think about it. My mom's a big one on uh. Every my mom has food in her purse all the time. Yeah. So I don't I, go anywhere without Cliff bars. 
my mom always has uh you know those nature valley granola bars yes they make a fucking huge mess but um my mom always has like one or two of those in her purse. So every I, I was at a funeral with her not that long ago. And I remember leaning over to her. I was like, do you have food? And she's like, yeah. Let like, <laughs> me get a granola bar. I ate a granola bar in church. <laughs> hey, you want to try to uh, see if someone will come on the show? Heck yeah. All right. Let's see. Let's see if we can get a mystery guest. Hold on. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. Yeah. Yo. Yo. What's up? Yo, you're on the show right now. Good time, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you want to come on? We don't have a guest. Right now? Yeah. Hold on a minute. All right. This is exciting, folks. We may have a mystery guest to come on. <laughs> Yo, I'm going to I'm gonna send you a link. If you can join, just, just join. I'll join, but you guys are going to be on. This is going to be you guys on my podcast. <laughs> oh, we got joint podcast. All right, yo, I'm going to send you a link now. Um, All right. <laughs> but I love this. I have to. I have to come to your house again. Yeah, dude, it's so much fun. We always, I, you know, like we always love guests at our house, and it's always nice because uh, the girls are always excited when someone comes over, especially now because like they don't see anybody. They see my. Yeah, they they seem genuinely excited to talk to me, which I dig. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> there was one day before a podcast, Evelyn was down here. They have like a fake kitchen set. And yeah. she was like, uh, who's on the phone? I was like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my podcast in a little bit. She's like, is it Mr. Montgomery? I was like, yeah. And she's like, hold on a second. So I, I don't know why we she Like kids have like weird memories with stuff like this. But I think we were at a bakery not that long ago. And I said, oh, look, they have black and white cookies. That's Mr. Montgomery's favorite. So she went over to her pretend kitchen and made uh, – black and white cookies for keith <laughs> oh <laughs> she man was, she was so i excited. forgot about that 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 really warms my heart i was gonna I say, say i remember she was like so excited. she's like take a well that's her big thing now is like take a picture i'm like why and she's like because you can send it to them then and they can see their cookies i was like uh, okay <laughs> like i, was I just, love that i was content with just telling you that she made you stuff <laughs> <laughs> well are you good at uh contra for N- for nes eh I'm not good. Uh, contra, yes. Super Contra, no. Super Contra is so hard, dude. I can't. I I really am. I'm bad at that. I've actually. Uh, I took the Raspberry Pi upstairs about a, a month ago, and I've been playing with it upstairs before I go to bed. Um, yeah. And I have gotten really, and it, the shitty part is, is that it doesn't have a save. I don't have a save feature on mine, so I have to keep. Oh, that's the only reason I've been able to beat. Um... The, the games I could never beat, like Ninja Turtles game. Oh, yeah. Blaster Master, Super Contra. The only reason I, I can beat them is because... Well, I just put the save. I put the codes in. So I, I save the codes and like write them down on like a little like post-it note and just leave it by the my nightstand. But, yeah. Uh, so I've been almost... I'm almost done. Remember the first Metroid? I fucking love this game so much. And like, <laughs> I always... I don't love... The first Metroid. Oh, now I, I love Super Metroid. Super Metroid was really good. My yeah. I, my roommate in college had the one that I I got really into. I never beat it though. Um, Metroid Prime. Yeah, that was a really good. I think it was on GameCube. But no, that um, was. Uh, it was. I think it was. Was it on Wii? Is that on Wii? So maybe it, it was either Wii. It was either Wii or GameCube. But I, the, I played one on Wii. That was awesome. So there's one that people always talk about with I, I also really like the first Legend of Zelda. Um Oh yeah. I I go back and play that still. I still play that and I like uh I, I watch it on YouTube and people do the the run throughs, like where they yeah. you can like they tell you what like they literally give you the order of like, okay, you can get five hearts before you go to the first castle or like, you know, before the first uh dungeon. And I'm like Oh shit, I didn't know all these like ins and outs of like, hey, you get enough money and you can buy the candle and if you burn this bush, like you can go down and it's just a hundred free diamonds. I'm like, holy shit. Like there's this guy on uh YouTube called Arcus. He he has like a mustache and a cowboy hat and he speed oh, runs old I've Nintendo seen, games. I've seen that dude before. That dude is so awesome. Yeah, he's really someone cool. called someone called him like the Bob Ross of gaming and i was like yeah oh, that's so accurate 
Cause he's so, he's just so like, he's so amiable and so likable and he's fun. And he's like the, he talks while he's playing, which is still like mind boggling to me. Like, um, he's so good. There's another YouTube channel. I think I've mentioned it on here before. Um, his name is summoning salt and he does the history of speed runs. So he literally goes through like all the old archives and yeah. will show, Hey, this person started beating this at, you know, in 2001 they started beating it in 54 minutes but then someone found this other glitch where you know the time dropped to like 23 minutes and they like, they name it after people so like if you find like these new ways to beat the game like they'll call it like the Montgomery trick like they literally like yeah. like, like it's so fucking awesome i watched the one with uh he does one about uh there's a whole bunch of people that do speed runs for um Mike Tyson's punch out Yes. But they do it blindfolded. That's crazy. Dude, it's fucking awesome. Because literally yeah. they, they listen to the cues in the game and they know when to punch. I'm like, dude, this is fucking oh, so cool. But we have we have Wii at my house now. My mom was going to get rid of hers because she had one in the basement. And she was like, I don't want this anymore. The, nobody really plays with it. Do you guys want it? And I was like, all right, whatever. Um, she doesn't have a lot of games for it. She had like this one game called Wii Party. Mm-hmm. Uh and it's literally they put a board game on Wii. So like you play all these really cool, fun mini games, and that determines how many die you roll. So like if you get first place, you get um, a regular die and then a golden die. And that has both, you know, six and six on it. So you can roll a potential twelve. And then if you get second place, you get a silver die and that has one through four on it. Like it is so much fun. And my girls are like addicted to it now because they just want to get really good. Cause there's a play mode where you can just play all the mini games and not mm-hmm. actually have to play the board game. And now they're just getting super good at the mini games. And it used to be like, I would just fucking trounce them when we played. Like I would just be like, I would be finished. <laughs> I was like 50, 50, 60 spaces ahead of them every time because I would just kill them in every game. Um, yesterday i walked downstairs and evelyn walked over to me and of course this is like typical like my kids style like they walked over evelyn shoved me <laughs> like on the hip and she goes i just beat your record on the ski jump and i was like what and she's like 449 feet you had the old record i have the new one so i was like <laughs> oh shit like they're getting good at it so i didn't play with them all this weekend because um they were really just like they wanted to be out. It was gorgeous outside, so they just wanted to be outside. They wanted to play on their swing set. They, we have a bounce house, so they we I blew up the bounce house, and they fucking play with that. But like now, hold on, do you have the bounce house just all the time now? Yeah, we bought you, it. You didn't you didn't just rent it for an event? Oh no no, we bought one. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, well, so you're we telling so, me so we didn't buy it. Okay, so like we actually so we did we put in for it. So that was the girls fourth birthday present i think it was fourth but Um, you own it yeah it's in my garage right now like if we if you came me if you came over my house we could go blow it up and you can go jump around in it that's what you're telling me i swear to god dude it's fucking awesome it's so much fun down there it's really fun um the only thing is is if you go in it you can be the only you you're the only person that can be in it um because it has a you can't be over uh like you can't have more than 200 pounds of people inside of it because that's how big the blower that gets the capacity for the blower I see. Yeah, but you can go in by yourself and have a great time. Go down the slide and everything. It's got a. It's got like a climb rock wall, like climbing wall, and oh sweet. You know, yeah, little, I weigh under two hundred. Well, under two hundred pounds. Uh, looks like we have somebody here. Oh yeah, yo. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? You're at, what, how's you it actually going? like you have the phone lines open or something. Looks like we no. got somebody calling in. Uh, you're caller one hundred six, Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, it's uh it's Brendan Ekstrom from Circus Survive making his glorious return to the show. I would I don't know about glorious. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Yo, our guest canceled last minute. So or I'm sorry, not last minute. Last minute would be like yeah, seven fifty nine PM. Yeah. Our our guest had to cancel for good reason, so I, I figured I'd just try giving you a call. Yeah. How many people could you call at this time, do you think? You could call Pat. Pat does not sleep. I could call Pat. I could call Mike Shaw. I could call Gary Vadim. I don't think I've ever called Gary um, this late. 
I was going to say, this is like, Gar- I think the way Gary's life is yeah. right now, I think this is bedtime. Back in the day, you could, though. Yeah. So Brendan has launched a new podcast, Off the Beat. Off the Beat podcast <laughs> with Brendan Ekstrom. Let, let, how was that going, Brendan? Uh, it was going really well before the depression set in. Yeah, the yeah. past. Wait, now the, the, the depression, like, from doing the podcast or I feel like it's unrelated and mostly has to do with uh uh I actually don't know. I mean if it was that easy I'd probably just fix it up. So Maybe. you're you have depression now is what you're saying. <sighs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. I I think the past three days I've just been like, fuck this. Uh like it's just like the um the totally lethargic uh, I don't want to move type of thing. It's really rough when there's like a kid running around and you're like, I'm horrible. This is horrible. I shouldn't be like this. Yeah, the first part of this episode, I was talking about how yesterday yesterday I was just racked with anxiety and I couldn't even function. And uh, so what do you do to try to get yourself out of I don't of know. Usually I have some some stuff that I can do. Um whether it's like a little bit of exercise or running around or, uh, you know, doing some work that that gets me mm-hmm. focused or just talking to somebody that makes me laugh. But recently, nothing <laughs> is working <laughs> uh, or we wouldn't be talking about it. So I don't know. It's very strange. It's like I upped a, my anxiety medication. I doubled the dosage recently. Um, oh, really? And... It, like the first day we did it, which usually I didn't think it was supposed to have any effect until after a couple of weeks. But the next day I was like, oh, my God, this is fucking great. And then uh, it just went back to just normal shit. But I don't know, man. What if you tried taking like four times the amount? Yeah. See what happens. <laughs> that's 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 ill advised yeah. for a bunch of different reasons. <laughs> like, no, hey, Brendan, don't do don't do, yeah, don't do don't that. Know. Brendan, do you find that it just. uh even in like the worst of times, do you find that it eventually passes? Like, do you like, is it like a, is it like time constrained? Like after like a week or is like, what's the longest you've ever gone with it? Um, usually it, it manifests uh, as some sort of anxiety that is a more, um, I mean, not in the beginning, I didn't know how to, to describe anxiety or to identify it when it was happening to me. I just was like, well, I'm fucking dying. <laughs> Uh, but then after I had therapy for a while and, and had symptoms of anxiety and like, um, the physiological aspects of it explained to be more than I understood it. Uh, and I could sit with it better and sort of breathe through it. Uh, the depression, this, I mean, this year is just, we, we haven't dealt with anything, obviously. I mean, fucking everybody talks about it on every podcast, so yeah, we know what we're dealing with. And for me, it's just been, it's been super difficult. Um, it, my, like, I haven't really found a good way to exercise and <clears throat> playing shows is the outlet that gives me a true release, um, where I'm just not, I don't know. It's, it's, you know, it's inex inexplicable for somebody that hasn't done it anybody that has done it they know what i'm talking about but i don't i don't have that kind of release in my life right now and um that's difficult and we're just going through a lot with like a five-year-old kid who's really struggling with the situation and um like the past like the past week like she she hasn't listened at all and it's not like testing boundaries type thing it's like she doesn't respond when we speak to her and it's uh like we're seeing someone about that so i mean i don't know it's heavy shit it's not got much to do with like hardcore music but i mean she's a fucking beautiful amazing kid that's really struggling with possibly being on the spectrum or having uh adhd um or or maybe something that you know i just don't even have a clue what it is um and we've been dealing with it for a long time and the more we deal with it without having help as to the best way, like we don't understand her, you know, uh, sometimes we do, but most of the time we don't. And it makes for 
a really difficult road for parenting and I've like fucked up more times than I would ever think that I could have already. She's five years old and I've like, you know, lost my temper and been impatient and like, <laughs> like, I'm like it's embarrassing and it sucks. So that shit, yeah, that shit just bogs you down after a while, you know, because like I just, all I want is to be the best person for her and for her to have a good life. And it's been really tough. Yeah. There's a thing, Brendan, you should also, if you're looking into like different diagnoses, there's one, um, I've had several students that have it. They call it auditory processing disorder. Right. And it's like, imagine, um, imagine you turned on a radio, a television and listen to something on YouTube simultaneously because there's so much happening your brain isn't able to process it. And it's like, there's certain things you can do to kind of like when I have kids in class that have auditory processing issues, like breaking down directions to single step things. Like first I want you to go to uh, take out this book. Right. Once you've done that, get my attention. Okay. Make eye contact with me. Perfect. Okay, cool. I want you to turn to this page. Like it's, it's a, there's a series of things, but I I can totally empathize with you with that, dude. There's times where you feel like I'm the worst parent in the world. Because you you feel like not only did you fuck up, but like you've let them down. And it's that double kind of like, not only have I fucked up myself, like, but I feel like I'm now passing this on to my child. Well, I mean, it's uh, weird because whatever she's dealing with, she's dealing with that thing, right? Like whether it's one of the things that we mentioned um, and that's the thing that you mentioned sounds, you know, they're all in the same sphere, which makes it so complicated, right? Like each thing could be a symptom of one of the other things, right? Um, yeah. And there's all nuances yeah. to each part. So, of it. Yeah. I mean, but that sounds like it, like, you know, she, she'll tell me like, I, I, I can't pay attention right now. And she's just like running back and forth. And she's like, I didn't hear you. Cause I was thinking like those types of things. Um, yeah. but, but it's like, wow. she's dealing with that. And then she's also just five and, sh- and there are yeah. times where she has behavioral things that I'm trying to like correct and say, that's not the best way to do that. But she's so sensitive that it's, there's just so much. It's crazy. But yeah, man, I, I hear you guys. I Friday night, you know, I, I think I come off a lot angrier than I seem, or maybe I just am angry and I don't, I don't know, but like. You know, I came to my girlfriend's house and I said something to her daughter. Just, I thought I was just saying something normal, but it apparently it came off like angry, and that like set that set the tone for the rest of the night. Yeah. And then I was like, oh man, like I got to really watch myself because I think I'm kidding around. Like, no, this, but it's really taken the wrong way. So I, I don't know, man. I, I got to, and I just felt really bad. And we all talked about it, like it, it was all good, but it's you know it's hard, it, especially with yeah, it's little. It's dangerous kids. to make an assumption about a child's sense of humor, right? Like, you oh, know. Yeah. Well, I've taught my kids now. Like, there's certain things that I say, and I'm like, okay, Daddy says this because like it's something that I think is funny. But I was like, it's not something that you guys go out and repeat. Like, and they're like, why? Like, um. So my daughters, my daughters now think like they know that mommy and daddy say swear words sometimes. And I try not my, I try my best not to swear around them, but like they actually were like, (laughs) I asked them the one day they were like talking about stuff and Ellie goes, Oh, Ooh, 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 Evie just said a swear word. And I was like, what'd she say? She was like, she's cursing back here. And I was like, what did she say? And she goes, she said the S word. And I'm like, Evie, stop. What are you doing? And she, Evie looks at me and she goes, Daddy, she was being stupid. Why can't I say someone stupid when they're being stupid? And I was yeah. like, uh, Oh, you have a point. That's the S word? <laughs> Honestly, S-word I'd stupid. rather that my daughter said shit. I'd rather she said shit than stupid, though. I don't want her <laughs> calling people stupid or idiots and stuff like that. It really is hard because, like, you definitely don't want them to be, like, because I can already see now, like, my daughters are overtly not aggressive, but they are very competitive when it comes to things that are like academic, especially. And I think in large part, it's my, it, my wife and I's fault. Like we absolutely, 
encourage them when they're doing really well in school and they see the praise they get from that and they seek it out. So when they do really well with something, they're like, even if they're doing like the, it's now, now like we're going to face it full on in the next, like they start first grade tomorrow and their first whole marking period, at least for the foreseeable future is going to be online. Are, are they? Yeah. So they, okay. So they have the same classes. Like they're not in the same class. We, we have them separated. So they they have different teachers, but they're going to get the same assignments because all the first grade assignments. We got to figure out a way this. to have them be like, they're also getting praise for helping each other with their homework and shit. All right, Brendan, did you hear, did you hear Steve's podcast episode that premiered today? I listened to uh, some of it before I tried to get some work done. Yeah, I don't know how much. All right. What did you think? And is there anything you would like to refute now on our show? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. No. Do I want to refute anything? I don't think I got far enough um, to do that. But no. I think Steve's a funny guy. He makes me laugh. Um, He definitely... He's the best. I'm just trying to to stir up some controversy for the benefit of our show. He did that within the first two minutes of your show, so... Yeah, we won't talk That's about fine. that. Though. Yeah, let's not bring any more <laughs> attention to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start. Let's start the podcast now. Yo, Keith, right. Tommy, welcome Brandon. to the Off the Beat Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? How you guys doing, man? Oh, we're doing great. You know, I'm glad we're here because I wanted to ask. Wait, you where are you? Are you guys are not together, right? You're not. In no, the no, no, no. Keith's in Williamsburg, and I, I'm in Feasterville. Mm. Which one of those would you th- consider to be more hipster? Uh, it's got to be Williamsburg, yeah, Williamsburg for sure. <laughs> Feasterville is like a series of gas stations and fucking Seven yeah. <laughs> Elevens. Uh, some some serious hangs go down there, though. The real hipsters have moved to Bushwick and I guess Bedstone. Damn, dude! The only thing I know about Bushwick is Bushwick Bill. Yeah, dude. Yeah, he's from there. He took his eye out on PCP. That makes nice. sense. Hey, Brendan, I have a question for All you. All right, we'll go back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> how, how all, is your podcast on a schedule? Like, do you do X amount of episodes a month or like, how do you nah, do it? man, I did not want to set that precedent from the very beginning. I was like, this is going to happen when it happens <laughs> because my, my general life schedule is so, uh, it's so demanding when it is demanding, and then I'm able to work a lot when we're not working very much. So, so it's yeah. kind of hard to to have like anything be a full time scheduled thing. And I just didn't want to put that kind of pressure on myself. So, I recorded a bunch of shit, and then I put most of it up. I have a couple more left that, but it's like a ton of editing for these last couple because, for yeah. whatever reason. Uh, we were just fucking around and like, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, I'm going to have to listen to this whole thing and be like, yo, I should just do this over. Um, so I'm in a, I'm in a point right now where it's like, uh, there is a little bit of stress that I'm feeling about needing to get back to it. Yeah. You know, I was just going to do this whenever too. Mm-hmm. Like we did the first four and then I was like, well, I guess we'll do it eventually. But then I figured out how to do this remotely so I've committed to new episodes every week, which, which was insane because, dude, it's so much pressure. Well, I'll tell you, though, that there is, um, the pressure is good in a way because it'll help you keep it rolling. Uh, well, like anything, if you take too long of a break from it, then it just like stretches and stretches and you can get stuck in that space. So exactly. That's why I don't want to stop because some weeks the anxiety is so much. I don't know. I just get nervous that I'm like, maybe I'll take a break. But then I'm like, no, if I take a break, I'm not going to stop. Let me ask you this. Why do you think that it causes you so much anxiety? Because we've talked about that at least a few times. And I thought it was mostly the anxiety leading up to the day because you just want it. You want it to be perfect. I can understand that. It's an absurd goal, but what what is it that that stresses you out about it during the week and you know leading up to it? I just get nervous the day I'm going to talk to somebody. Okay. So it's not always. I get then. nervous. No, it's just 
the day we're going to record, I get really anxious. Yeah. And, and it, it's, you know, it, it's always a question of how anxious am I going to be? You know, sometimes it's really bad. Sometimes it's whatever. But, uh, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, I want everything to go perfectly. And any anything I'd have to do that involves people, I get nervous before, whether I want to do it or whether I don't want right. to do it. That's just the way it's going to go. A little bit of anxiety is probably good, too. Like a little bit of tension, but... It is, because that means I care. And, yo, how long does it take you to edit an episode? Uh, anywhere between... <laughs> No one in the history of podcasting has edited podcasts as long as I edit them. It, the dude, first one that I put up, me... was, I probably worked on for 30 hours because I was working on it for, <laughs> for months. And um, and I was editing, like, because I'm learning so much about EQ. I'm learning about compression and different, different parts of the program. And um, so I get bogged down in the learning curve and wanting to know like the minutia of all these things. So that's part of it, but also editing conversational flow. You know, I think I, I get really, really deep into it. So I, I, Me I turned it over to, to Vadim's brother wants to do it too. And like, I'm just too insane. Like I got it back and I was like, listen, I listened to it for like five minutes and I was like, Nope, I just have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> i would i love to to do everything myself i love that we control the site ourselves. i love that i make the graphics myself i would like to do the sound myself eventually but i'm i'm just not there yet and uh rich if you're listening to this uh don't worry it's not gonna happen anytime soon but uh <laughs> but i the, i love editing and i love editing the conversation and i i'm so crazy with it when i listen to other podcasts now I'm like editing it in my mind. I'm like, they should have taken this out. Right. We don't need this part. They could have kept it moving here. And sometimes when I'm doing the, the conversation, I'm like editing it in real time in my yeah, head. Yeah, that stuff. I'm like, tough, this is coming too. out. Well, that like, stuff's all, I mean, that's why I, I, at least in the beginning, wanted to be in control of that too, because it's really subjective. And the way yeah. that I create the conversational flow is going to be part of how people listen to it you know and what it what it is in general but but yeah. that stuff's hard man i don't know yeah i was gonna i was going to just take whatever i recorded and throw it right up online and mike shaw told me that i should edit and i was like really because the 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 podcast i drew inspiration from they just kind of wing it and they put the whole thing up there but i have to say i'm really glad i didn't yeah do that. that's probably not the way to go in general because imagine hearing like, oh, we're taking a minute to think of what this thing is called. Well, it depends like, on, oh, I mean, I have a friend that does that with his podcast and I've just never finished it <laughs> because it's like, yeah. it's like two and a half hours <laughs> long. You know, I'm like, all right, I can't fucking listen to all this. I yeah. got stuff to do. How long are your episodes typically? The one I listened to was two They're hours. They're about an hour and 20, I'd say hour and a half, somewhere around that is the goal. Okay. Ours are usually like two hours. Do you think that's too long? Um, no, I don't. I don't think that there's a rule. Uh, I'll just say that. I guess I don't think that there's really a rule of thumb. If you're into a conversation that that really feels good, it feels like you're not just repeating things. Then I think it's fine to take it. You know, like all of Colin's yeah. podcasts are that long. Um, but I, I don't. I don't think I could ever do. Like I don't think they that I could do them that long all the time. But it's a lot of pressure, but I I have to say I'm so glad that we do this, Tommy and I because I need something to do creative and I I don't have a band, you know, I was kind of starting one before the pandemic started, which I hope I might still do, but I I you know, and I'm the acting class wasn't happening anymore, so I need to be doing something. So this thing keeps me super occupied. Didn't you grow a beard though? Which I, I love. You grew a beard. Uh, yeah, but that just kind of happens. I don't have to like sit and oh, do well, that. Oh, you're not you're doing it right then. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of depression or like passing the time, and do, do you, does your podcast bring you joy, Brendan, and that it's like something for you to do and focus your time and energy on? Uh, that's, I mean, I don't really know. I think it's just, I, I should say, yes, it's fun. I enjoy it. I enjoy the conversations. The editing part is when you get into uh, 
just being neurotic, right? So, so yes. I don't know if that, that's the worst. Yeah, I don't part. know if that's necessarily good. You know, like I enjoy doing it because I enjoy learning and I enjoy shaping it, but but not knowing when to just be like, it's not a big deal that there's this little thing here and trying to spend 15 minutes. Like maybe if I put these two parts of different words together, like there, there's stuff in the first couple podcasts that you would never know that like I cut words in half and blended them with another word to make it sound like a word. <laughs> it's like, there's crazy <laughs> shit like that all over. And that's what it's taken so long. It's like, uh, I did that in order to to really refine it so it wouldn't be two hours, you know, yeah. without shaving off too much of the the important part of the conversation. The thing I like the best about this is like I'm I can pretty I can pretty safely say I'm never going to be in a touring band, right? So this gives me the connection to music. Like Tommy and I can discover an awesome band. And now we can message them and say, hey, do you want to come on the show? And sometimes they will, and we'll get to talk about it. And that's cool. It's like a way to be connected to something that we love so much, because we're probably never going to be in a band that's going to really tour and be out there and be able to connect that yeah, way. you're too old, oh, for sure. I 100% yeah. will never be I am band. definitely too old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like four years uh, older than me, aren't know. you? I'm, I think I'm 30, 32. That's hard yeah. to tell. Hey, I'll be 28. That's fine. How old's your sister now? My younger sister? Yeah. Why do you always say that? You have an older sister? Yeah. I did uh, not know that. Yeah, man. She is... uh, I have an older... Well, she's a half-sister, but we're we're very close, so I just say sister. What's the other half? I remember... I I met your... So I met Keith's older sister. Do you remember I threw a party at my house on my back porch? Yeah. And your older sister showed up, and I was so impressed that... Uh, I don't know if it was her fiance at the time or Mimi, who's just a boyfriend, but he went to Yale and I was like, I can't stop talking to him like about, he had like a degree in architecture from <laughs> Yale. I'm like, holy shit. Like, really? Like you went to like, yeah, that's, that's her husband. So don't tell the end of the story. Oh yeah. No, 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 no. But I mean, I was just floored. <laughs> I was just floored. <laughs> I was just floored to meet him. Cause I was like, dude, I, I've never like, that's like meeting someone that went to Harvard. You're like, really? That's like you, you like really paid attention in school and did all your work. Holy shit. I like to do this thing now where when people say that they went to like an Ivy League school, I pretend not to know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> like they'll be like, he went to Harvard. I'll be like, oh, what is that? <laughs> and they're like, Harvard? And I'm like, oh, I never heard of that. Uh, what sp- is that? Is yeah. that like it's a, a spring break thing? Like a then, trade school or something? What is that? So I think, I think one of the most neurotic things that I have about doing a podcast now is noticing the phrases and words that i repeat um and and also topics like and now i've listened to your show so much that i know all of yours too oh i (laughs) i've started i started saying like a lot i'm trying to say like less that that's the the new one that's popped up it's like whack-a-mole you get one down and another one comes right back because something has to fill the silence we're terrified of silence right yes and i do this thing where I say something and I pause so I don't fuck it up. That's what I do too. I start sentences with, here's the thing. Yeah, here's the thing. Yeah. I say, uh, I forgot what I say. <laughs> See, this is what happens when there's silence. It's so bad. <laughs> it's horrible. I know, it just scared yeah, the shit terrible. out of me. Brendan, when you when you're going to talk to somebody, do you do a bunch of research and listen to other podcasts and that kind of thing? I don't. I tried it once, but I felt like I was spoiling the conversation for myself because I'm like, no, this is stuff I want to ask about. I like to find out about it as I'm talking to the person. No, I I, I think that I just have my own shit that I want to talk to people about for the most part. Uh, the mo the most yeah. research that I've done was go back and listen to josh's hopes fall uh catalog a little while ago before we spoke and and i <clears throat> had no idea that they'd put the last record out and i was just fucking floored by it it's amazing it's, it's so, so good. good yeah um but yeah. Th- that was interesting to go and relive that and um generally speaking i 
I like to have at least just like a couple little things so there's some direction because with the conversation I was saying that really needs edited, um, I talked to a friend of mine and I didn't really have any map for that conversation. And we spoke at yeah. like noon because she's in Germany and she's got, <clears throat> she has a baby at, at the time. She had a, like a really young baby. And um, I can't fucking talk to anybody at noon. It was horrible. I was like, why, dude, this isn't, this isn't working. <laughs> it's just not, not good, man. My brain's not there. So I should have had something lying in the waiting for that one. Yeah, it, it sometimes I do more prep than others. It really just depends on what's going on and I don't know, sometimes there's not a lot of information out there, so I just have to come up with shit to talk about. Yeah. But I I I usually have specific things I want to ask about. I like to know what makes people tick. I like to know struggles they've overcome. I like to know how they got into a band and how they made it work and what they did to support themselves because like I don't know. I had to, I had a lot of trouble just even getting into bands. So I'm like, how'd you do it? Like, who asked you? How'd you, how'd you get right. into it? And I always wanted to like kind of do music full time, but I never made that leap. So I, I like to ask questions around that. I'm just, I'm just really curious about the whole process. It's odd um, because I don't know how much, I, I guess I try to keep them more conversational. So it does turn into a bit of a back and forth about my experience. But at the same time, that can get in the way of what the conversation, like the the picture that you're trying to paint of the guest. So, uh, you know, I try not to insert too much of my own experience with things, but that that's one that I'm still sort of trying to figure out. Yeah. Um, I also realize that that if I do this with any kind of a video chat and I can see the person that it's a horrible idea. Cause we just bullshit and laugh at each other the whole time. And I'm like, I can see you. This is crazy. We didn't even have phones when I was a kid or whatever, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do any video. Well, one, because yeah, I don't want, I don't even want people to know my last name because the stuff I talk about on here, I don't want my job to know. Well, about change that. your name then. I'm going to change my name to, uh, something. Yeah. Brendan Ekstrom. <laughs> That's the singer of Life of Agony. Keith uh, Keith Caputo. Change your name. That'll probably go over well. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the blowback from when I made fun of that band. Uh, Billy Club Sandwich. In my head, I'm like, I'm going to get the shit. No, 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 no. You didn't make fun of them. Oh. Now, let's clarify. Uh, Billy Club Sandwich, if you're listening, Tommy did not make fun of you. I didn't he care. said, he said, a riff of yours sounded like ministry and you know what billy club sandwich you wrote that riff ministry did not and we support you <laughs> <laughs> I'm, All right. I'm getting i'm getting rolled on at the next fucking this is hardcore <laughs> and that's that that is why that. would you go there what's that like this is hardcore this yeah. is hardcore it's fun it's i listen i go saturday from 6 p.m to 11 p.m that's all I can take. It's like the length of one big hardcore show. I saw I saw a friend in a band a while ago. Uh, I guess we, I should call him an acquaintance because I don't think we've ever particularly got along. Um, yeah. And I don't have that situation with many people, so it's interesting. But uh, I just was like, yo, how you doing? This is actually probably like seven years ago now. And I was like, kind of stoked to see him it had been a long time and he's like yeah man like whatever and then he was like but you wouldn't know man like you're too cool for a uh, for hardcore now right like you're too cool for all this shit and then he just that was the rest of the conversation and i was, oh, wow. and I was like all right see you later are you too cool for hardcore <laughs> well that's that's why i brought that up because maybe like i'm definitely not too cool for it but i'm wondering if there is a a sense of like i definitely I definitely hit a point where I didn't want to be at a hardcore show anymore because people get the shit beat out of them. Like, I'm not interested in seeing that happen on any level. Like, none of that yeah. makes me, like, feel great about seeing music or experiencing music. Like the, I stopped going for a while because that's the way it was. It There was going to be a fight. There was going to be some incidents. And it was gang mentality. Like, 
there was guaranteed there was going to be a guy at the show who would crowd kill and if you even pushed him away gently a little yeah. bit six people were going to roll on you and i was like this is this is and stupid that's, like, yeah but I that's don't... fine cuz that's like if if everybody's down for that that's cool i'm just not down for that so i i stopped going for a while but it's it's not like that anymore you know it, you don't really see that at this is hardcore and uh I don't know. So it's it's better now. But Brendan, I think uh if if live music ever happens again, you should come to the next All Else Failed show oh, in yeah. Philly with Tommy and I. Now that is that is hardcore in its purest form. If you crowd kill at that show, somebody's gonna kick the shit out of you for doing that. Like because everybody's there to have a good time. Everybody's yeah. there to have a like sing along, fucking scream the words talk, have a, talk to me about it, that band for a second because when when this day forward was touring or at least when i was touring with them um i remember seeing them at a show and it was cool but i actually feel like it was like the last all else failed show like they probably did six thousand of those oh, yeah. um but it was cool but they didn't seem like they had they definitely didn't seem like they had a huge following or a very big following and it might've just been a sign of the times, but was there something that happened to them, you know, like after 2005 or so that the band got bigger? Like, yes, they've, they've kind of grown. They, they just took a long time to get their due for some mm -hmm. reason. And I think now they've, they've kind of, yeah, they have a bigger following. They played, this is hardcore, uh hate five six that guy sonny really likes them and he's filmed them a bunch of times and he's always pushing them so that gave them like a, a newer bigger audience and yeah man it's just like and i don't know they're friendly I, I, with the guys from uh boy sets fire so when boy sets fire did the european shows uh i guess a year and a half ago now um they took all has failed with them yeah so it, it took a really long time but i think people finally understand them. And I, I didn't understand why they weren't bigger back in the day. Just, I don't know, just the passion and there's just something about them that like really gets me yeah, going. I don't remember um, ever feeling like that about music. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when Steve was on it, it seemed one thing that was interesting uh, when Steve Clifford was on our podcast, the episode that came out today, one thing that was interesting was, that I didn't realize everyone was just done with hardcore. Like everyone wanted not to be tied to hardcore or like any of the satellite type of scenes. Like they were just ready to move on to something else. Yeah. It seemed Holy. like, uh, that's why it's interesting that you're doing this because I mean, there are still, there are people that have really like, I don't know, like the flame still burns and whatnot, <laughs> you know, like, um, yeah. well, listen, this is a misconception about our show. We are not a hardcore podcast. We are a music podcast and, and we talk about life, music and life. All right. Hold on. <laughs> How many times have you said life? I'm going to have to look that Twice. shit up. Now people get confused. They think it's just hardcore or just the Northeast. Nah, man, the Northeast is the jumping off point, but we, we talk about everyone's scene, and uh, we would have anybody on, hip-hop, hardcore, yeah, post-hardcore. You, most, you interviewed like 14 hardcore bands in, in a row That's to who start. I know. Yeah, yeah <laughs> these are the people we yeah. know, though. That's the <laughs> so that yeah. set a little bit of a uh, tone, I think. Um, That's true. Can you get us any big guests outside of hardcore? Uh, I mean, I could probably... Uh, no. So let me ask you this. Did you know? <laughs> I thought, I thought it was interesting that Steve also mentioned that, uh, Zayo blood and fire like that yeah. for me, like that was such a huge record. And Steve was probably a kid. Like he was a child when he was listening to that shit. Again, I guess yeah. it's because of the Christian thing. Like a lot of people I know found Zayo and they were like, wow, I can listen to this. <laughs> like my parents will let me listen yeah. to this, but I thought it was interesting that they were mentioned again. So, like, how many yeah, people are on your like... show? Like me, Pat, and Steve, and I feel like somebody else did too. I think Mike Shaw actually mentioned that record as yeah. well. 
yeah there's a bunch we had uh scott mellinger from zayo on he mentioned yeah, i know that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great episode that was one of my favorites chris from poison the well mentioned zayo dude they 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 were like trailblazers i think for for that wave of metalcore so yeah yeah because that album is just unbelievably good now i'm gonna hit steve up and be like yo we should cover this dude that would be well, sick. I, all right, is my, now let me interview you guys. All right. All right, Keith, what's your middle name? Robert. Oh, no, come on. Seriously? <laughs> Dude, that's a sick name. Keith, Robert, uh, come on. Capella. Yeah. Keith, I thought it was Alan. Are you sure it's not Alan? Yeah, I think I know my own middle name, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, do you play video games too? I play only the old video games. I have like one of those emulators, so I play like the old Nintendo right, games. Cool. Yeah, I don't play like the new what about, stuff. What have, have you played? Any new stuff, Keith? Yeah, man, I'm I'm uh, halfway through Final Fantasy VII remake. Okay. That's awesome. I play a lot of Call of Duty, Modern Warfare. I got my first Warzone win recently. I was very excited about that, and I'm moving on to Last of Us Two. As soon as I'm done with Final yeah, Fantasy VII. I'm ready to say that was the best game that I've ever played. Dude, I can't wait to but play I it. I shouldn't have said that because now it's like, the, I'm sure the hype's already through the roof, but like... No, everyone is saying yeah. that. Everyone I've talked to, several people on this show even have yeah. said it's so good. And I, oh dude, I, I just can't wait. What's it called? Last of Us. Uh, and they came out with a sequel. It's like, imagine, did you ever see The Road? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Imagine that, but like a video game. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's like apocalyptic. It's kinda, apocalyptic, like, yeah. but it's also essentially a zombie game. But the way that they wrote it, it seems like something that could actually happen in the scope of the world at some point because it's based on uh, like the Cordyceps mushroom, which I don't know if you've ever seen. Um, I think it was on planet Earth, but insects will eat this mushroom or inhale the spores from it. And then the mushroom starts to, con- or the spores start to control the insect's brain, and they make the insect climb to the highest place in the area. So it'll like climb oh. up a tree, and then it'll die there, and the the spores will grow into another like mushroom that comes up out of the creature's body, and then like okay. the spores will go from that height on to the next area so so that that's secular like hey yeah okay. so they've so translated it, it, that into repopulate. now humans can be infected by it and it's crazy it's super crazy yeah but and uh yo did you know they're making a hbo television show based on the game i did yeah i'm actually kind of excited about that i'm also really excited i don't know if like comics are off topic for you but they're they're making no. uh why the last man which is one of the best books that i've ever read and Juliana, uh, my girlfriend's cousin, is the lead. I guess he's the only man <laughs> on the show, oh, wow. but he got the role, so that's really cool. So hopefully that's good, because there have been a few of my favorite comics that have not turned out so great recently. Some of them have been good. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm pretty stoked. But I, I definitely like uh, uh, replaced like alcohol and shit like that with playing a little bit too much video games at night recently dude me too much to the chagrin of my it's girlfriend tough, but dude. yeah but you know what i timed how much i play a week it's an average of two hours per day like some days it's nothing some days it's four hours mm-hmm. so it's about an average two hours per day and i don't think that's that bad yeah. so we're gonna wind down now brendan thanks for jumping on this was fun yeah dude thank you so this much is mediocre at best hey, hey. listen <laughs> The Northeast Scene Podcast is the number one weekly music podcast. Rated by us. Oh, okay. <laughs> who, who the fuck is that? You me. What I want to do, I want to review your podcast so far. We should go through each one. And I'll tell you which ones were the best. I'll rank them. I'll tell you what, what you did well and what you did poorly. No, I, I wouldn't be able to handle that, dude. I, I, I don't take criticism well. And... Did you hear when I had Josh on again and I asked him which podcast he liked better, ours or yours? No. <laughs> <laughs> but 
but then I said, he's like, oh, dude. And I was like, I'm just kidding. I didn't, I didn't actually have him answer. What the hell was I just going to say to you? Oh, uh, well, if Tommy ever dies, I'll come on. I'll do it. Yeah, there you go. Oh, man. <laughs> well, hopefully that I just doesn't think it's happen. important to have a backup. If Keith ever yeah. dies, I'll do it with you, Tommy. Uh, yeah, you guys just take over if... Uh, would you edit it, Brendan? Yeah, I'll definitely edit it. Unless there's any background noise on your side, then I'm not going to do it. <laughs> what if we just combined podcasts? Like, it, wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be better if we combined yeah. forces rather than each of us having a it podcast? It might be. Like fucking uh, Damn Yankee. Off the beat of the Northeast scene starring Brendan, Keith, and Tommy. <laughs> like Damn Yankee. <laughs> super group. So just like everybody. Yeah, we down. should do a super group, yeah. though. All right, listen, folks. Like us, subscribe to us, email us. We have we need more stories from you. We haven't gotten many. We want to hear from you. We want to hear your experiences. Follow us on Instagram, the N E Scene. Follow us on Twitter, the N E Scene. And uh, let's do this thing, man. You know, we're it's, doing uh, this. It's weird when you forget you're on a podcast, and then someone's like, "All right, folks." <laughs> and you're like, "Wait a minute, I'm looking around the room like there might be some people over there." All right, well, this has been great, guys. Thanks for being on the Off the Beat podcast, and now we'll... uh... All right, right. take care. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for for cheering me up. Appreciate you guys. We appreciate you, and thanks for jumping on. And thanks, everyone, for listening, and until next time. (laughs) 